Still confused between canine guided and group function occlusion? Let's fix that in under 90 seconds. In canine guided occlusion, only the maxillary and mandibular canines contact on the working side during lateral movements, leading to posterior disocclusion. In group function occlusion, multiple teeth on the working side, usually the premolars and molars, contact during lateral movements, resulting in the distribution of occlusal load across several posterior teeth. The goal in both is to eliminate non-working side contacts to avoid interferences and protect the system. Force-wise, canine guidance concentrates forces on a single, strong, long-rooted tooth, the canine. Group function spreads the occlusal load across multiple teeth, distributing forces over a wider area. Biomechanically, disoccluding the posterior teeth protects the periodontium, restoration, and even the TMJ. Whereas group function occlusion reduces stress on individual teeth by spreading the load. Canine guidance is ideal for younger patients with healthy, well-aligned canines and minimal occlusal wear. Group function occlusion is suitable for elderly patients with worn, missing or periodontally compromised canines. Canine guided occlusion is preferred in fixed prostheses, crowns and bridges if the canines are sound and can support the load. Group function is more common in removable prosthodontics where canine guidance cannot be achieved. Canine guided occlusion demands durable, wear resistant materials and precise occlusal harmony. In group function, you will need careful occlusal adjustment to avoid uneven force distribution and prosthesis failure. So, next time you are planning occlusion, look at the patient's age, canine stages, and prosthesis type and choose wisely. Hope that helps. Want to learn about these occlusal curves in depth? Click the link below and subscribe to Dentistified if you are serious about prosto.